Here's another crazy theory that we've learned after learning about cut content. So, when Echidna told Subaru, let's make a vow. Apparently, the subtitle said vow last episode, but Annie just calls it a pact. When creating the pact, notice how Subaru lost his memories about the sanctuary. Sorry, the witch's you know, tea party and what Echidna said. He lost the memories. But Echidna also mentioned Subaru had a pre-existing pact that he may not have been aware of. Obviously, this is alluding to Satala and Return by Death. And if we assume that these pacts are similar in the sense that you lose the memory, then I guess it kind of makes sense as to why Subaru doesn't seem to know Satala, but Satala does know Subaru. Something to really think about. What's happening right now? Well, Amelia went into the, the ruins for the trial and she immediately just... <laughs> the, the whole building stopped glowing. So I guess she just got bodied as soon as she went there. Subaru goes in there because obviously he too is qualified thanks to the help of Echidna. And now he has to face some sort of trial about his past. We see his dad. Seems like a super jacked, wholesome, nice guy. But exactly why is his personality like this of acting as if he wasted his entire life and how much he hates himself even though his family seems to be relatively positive? Let's begin today's reaction. We're back oh, on Earth. I'm I'm the the <laughs> <scared. laughs> He's jacked. <laughs> You see how jacked this guy is? He's cycling all types of fucking roids. Subaru literally just... Like, he was in an unfavorable position there. And Subaru overturned it. He is actually so strong. Like, we know his grip strength is super strong. We've seen in Arc 1 his Jackie Chan-like fucking moves. Like, he is physically insane. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of Bleach, where Ichigo and his dad, you know, they kind of do this shit too, right? Mother? Mother. Yep. Typical dead mom hairstyle, right? Kind of braided, leaning on one side. This is like the de facto flashback dead mom hairstyle for whatever reason. They just always have that. She sounds kind of slow. Maybe I'm being mean. But the way that she pronounces words, the way that she delays it, the pacing, she seems kind of like an airhead, I'm not sure. But she seems really nice. The dad seems nice. The full hat, full, the whole family here is like really positive and wholesome, right? <laughs> she did say she tried extra hard. I, <laughs> mom, what the hell is this? Yeah. He's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you see that shit? <laughs> he, he, Subaru pushed the fucking beans to his dad, the peas, and the dad just silently, just while talking to Subaru, acting as if he didn't do anything, boom, slides it over to mom. Alright, Okasan, you eat the peas. <laughs> On face. <laughs> Back to Subaru. What day is it today? Yeah. Misa looks nice. But the toast... What is this? What's at the top here? This ain't jam. Is this jam? Is this melted butter underneath and jam? I'm not really sure. It looks like some kind of fucking to like squished tomato shit. <laughs> the mom is very wholesome. Why'd you, why'd you fix this shit? I like miso and I like strawberry jam. Who does she remind me of right now? Oh, is there a character that kind of talks like this? Is there... Amelia doesn't really talk like this. For some fucked up reason, Petra comes to mind. But I don't really think so. <laughs> I think I mentioned Petra because the slow talking. I think that's why. Masha? Roshdere. Kind of. Kind of. 
I hate the same things you and mother. Everyone hates the peas. Can we just throw the peas out? Everyone fucking hates the peas at this table and no one's taking accountability. Why are you making me eat the peas? <laughs> Why me? Give it to mom. Okay. Is it like his first day of school? I'll sleep until noon. Boom. Okay. I don't want to go to school. I'm going to sleep until noon. Boom. Very slothful. Sinful. I don't know. Paida <laughs> that's which factor? Slot. I don't know. Interesting though. Did Satala tickle his heart? Almost 8 a.m. Yeah. What happens? Hmm. Interesting. It's already past eight. Ah, it's too late, man. I'm gonna sleep in. So you kind of see the excuses he's making, right? I've done this shit. A lot of people do. It's like, I'm like gaming. It's like 2.30. And it's like, all right, I'll, I'll study when it hits 3 o'clock. And I'm gaming and it hits the 3.05 p.m. And I'm like, I, you know, I went over. I'll start at 4. Fuck it. Ah, whatever. <laughs> Kaida. Ooh, that was slothful again. You make excuses. You're lazy about this. You try to justify it in your head. It seems like boom. Because it's about confronting your past. This trial is confronting your past. So in our past, are we supposed to fix our flaws? Is that the whole point? <laughs> that normally calms it down. Anxiety, panic attacks? This is beyond that? Usually, he would just sleep in and just hide away from society. And usually, it would get better. But now, it's just like, no, it's getting worse. Confront your problems and fears. <laughs> we need to see Roswell do this and say, hee hee, dude. I need to see Roswell do this fucking moonwalk. <laughs> You could have caught him jacking off, Dad. Man, all the waifus, man. All silver hair. So, like, straight up, Emilia was the perfect match. He thirsted for silver hair girls so hard. But he didn't fold for Echidna. So, it goes to show how loyal he is. I love Amelia. You should get out. So this seems like the father is aware of Subaru's tendencies to just make, make excuses and kind of shut himself in. Even though the whole family household is so nice, Subaru is pampered in that, in, in that context. And the dad is trying to be like, positively push him out of his shell. More and more like this. Cherry blossoms. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, look at this fucking loser. You fucking walking out at night in the morning? You don't got a job no more? Hey, did you guys all hear? The Natsuki dad, he don't. He fucking unemployed. He needs us like his son. <laughs> Okay, what the hell is this? Yo, yeah, the tracksuit is back. And he, the whole frame is very hazy as if this is walking down memory lane or some shit. But look at the dad. He straight up pulled a gal's number. You seen this shit? He got a tanned Gyaru, bro. What? Wait. What about your wife? What are you... <laughs> 
my headcanon for that is dad wanted to get her number to introduce her to his son. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe he's trying to fucking get his son in there or some shit. I know that pride and joy is a very common phrase. Yes, I know. But like, pride mentioned! <laughs> they do look up very alike, does it? He's got the mother's eyes? Does the mom have like sharp eyes like that? I have to go back, but the hairstyle, everything is kind of like that, but the facial features, like the eyes are mom's. <laughs> You're old enough to have a son that age. Did they fuck early? Like, how old is the dad right now? Is the implication here is dad had Subaru at a very, very young age? Monday. Well, dad is unemployed now. He got laid off, and I'm a fucking neat. So we're a neat family now. We're having a neat walk. You wanna join us? <laughs> Another instance. Another instance where what are you doing at, with your ad day with your dad at this hour? Because he should be at school. Another instance of him being lazy and his inaction is causing dudum. I don't know. There's somewhere else he needs to be. Yeah, you didn't do anything wrong. It's up to him to deal with it himself. But the dad isn't talking about the trial. The dad is talking about Subaru's like... This deep-rooted problem that he has about making excuses to avoid shit. Like, what is at the core issue here? All this anxiety building up. The more that he avoids shit... I mean, the more you like avoid school and the more you skip it, I'm sure the more excuses you're gonna make. And it's kind of scary to get back in there. Like, the more you avoid shit, have you ever guys had that issue where sometimes you just want to avoid stuff because you're depressed and you're sad and sometimes you just don't want to do shit and the more you, like, protect, you, like, you, uh, what's the word? It's not protagonist. It starts with P, not plagiarize. You're, you're wasting time. What's that word? The more you, the more you, does anybody know? Procrastinate. Thank you, thank you. The more you procrastinate, the more excuses you make and you, it's like a sinking, like, sand. Yeah, it's like a quicksand. You feel like you're falling down more and more and you start to reason as to why you don't want to do it. Love mentioned. <laughs> that immediate... <laughs> the, dad, the, dad. <laughs> the dad, bro. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, you need to go to school. You need to confront your problems. Everything that you're avoiding, you need to do it or else it's gonna get worse. Go to school, bro. Not right now. Emilia. Yeah, Amelia. Schizo. He's gone schizo, bro. So in the trial, I guess he has no memories of Amelia or anything like that. It's basically himself back on Earth without any memories of ReZero. I love Amelia. I am Mediator Belaguera. Is there a girl you like? I am meaty. Is there a girl you- I am <laughs> These two just have a conversation, just say the same shit over and over again. Okay, what's going on, man? The dad is so considerate. He's so nice and patient. 
俺は学校が全てとは思ってじゃねえの School for losers なんでうん今日は急にそんな話する気になったんだよ Because this is a trial <laughs> and this isn't actually your dad right now even though it is, right? Like there's a reason for it why he's confronting him, right? Because like the whole point of this is to walk down memory lane and relive his life but fix his mistakes, right? That's the whole point of the trial? First day of school? Peace day? <laughs> Fuck peace day. Blame your mom. Seemed a little bit better. Yeah. Your face still looks like a bad guy, so with those mean eyes you got from your mom. So the mom has super cold eyes, but she's kind of like an aloof airhead, and she seems kind, anyways. So why would his face look better this time? Because prior to this, I'm just gonna assume that's just like old Subaru, right? Before ReZero, just, you know, looking like a fucking neat. But after the events of what happened so far, right? Now he went through the trial, and maybe there's a little bit of that, you know, that carried over, right? All the things that he got better during the events of season one and up till now. So that's why his eyes seem better. Is, is that what's going on here? Excuses, excuses, excuses again. The more you lie to yourself, the more you're going to have a fucking heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> He's really gonna fail the trial at this rate, right? Like, if he continues to have these moments of, like, rejecting uh, what he should be facing, I guess that means that, like, this shit happens, then you, like, fail the trial. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia? Lapillo? Lapillo. Silver hair. Amelia. Mark 2. E M T. Remember, may the blessings of the spirits be with you is just fucking cap. Straight up, no more useful than Petra's fucking blank handkerchief that he, she, she gave to him. It's all cap. I got a thing for silver hair girls. Okay, Emily kind of like saved them there. Oh. Hey, here we go. Alright. Oh, shit. <laughs> now you saw me the intro. 10 minutes into the episode, now you show me the intro scene, but goddamn. So, everything happened right now, right? Going down memory lane. This is the trial. Confront your past. Every time he falls back into his old tendencies of being lazy and making excuses as to why he doesn't want to go to school, right? All the shit that made him who he is. The more you get this, like, anxiety and, like, a heart attack, I don't know. But if you, you know, confront them and be better, and Amelia just kind of saved him there, right? I think he's remembering Amelia, right? All those memories came back, so there's a girl I like. We're going good. Let's go. I'm Are you guys actually expecting me to cry this episode? Genuinely. I was like, this shit's not gonna make me cry. Because I'm a fucking sociopath. That like... When I'm like depressed and down on myself, I tell myself fucking skill issue. I tell myself, are you this fucking pathetic? I pick myself up. I will cry? Nah. I only cry in those moments like episode 7 when it's like all about me, me, me. Episode 7 is specific. Episode 7 and 23 is all about... Narcissism and self-worth not being received. Because I can resonate with that and, re and relate to that, absolutely. But this neat shit, I'm not a fucking neat. I'm a fucking Giga Chad. No, that's kind of cringe, but like this shit, I, I, I don't know, it's pretty... I'm not like emotionally invested into this. But episode 7 and 23, that's like on a different level of like... Subaru's own self-worth and heroics not being recognized, and it's just like, oh my god. Like, that shit pierces me through the soul. Like, this parental shit, it's just like, it's wholesome. It's nice. I'm not gonna fucking cry over it. The awareness. Here we go. 
But mom and dad are too nice. Look at that. So this is somehow... Because the mom and dad are like too nice and supportive, Subaru was able, never able to like correct himself. Because <laughs> like he wanted them to like shit on him, but like they're too nice and kind and considerate and patient. Okay. Oh, childhood. Number one! Oh shit, he peaked, bro. Yo, are we about to get some dangerous in my heart? Each color like peeking in fucking kindergarten shit? Like what's happening? Look at that. He's like outgoing. Mom and dad out there too. You're his kid. Compared to that. That's the thing, bro, right? And like, if you're coddled as like a special kid through all these celebrations at a young age and you put, you're put on a pedestal and then you realize later on that the world is a lot bigger and you're not that talented, that's a harsh realization. And people that are told that they're gifted children all their lives and they get out and then they finally realize what the world is like, you can't recover. You don't know how to recover because you've never failed. The moment that you fail like that after being so glazed up, you have no understanding of how to come back from it. That's why it's never good to like coddle kids and tell them you're like a chat, you're like a genius, you're different, right? Because that's not the case. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> it made no sense. This guy got 98, Subaru got 30 here, but I guess at this point he's already given up, huh? Subaru basically just gave up at this point. Mm. But these are like the excuses you make up in your mind, right? To justify why you're not special. To diminish other people's achievements. And make sure that, hey, it doesn't matter. Who cares about a math test, right? Mm. Come the class clown. Yeah? Man, this shit I can definitely relate to. Like, growing up, I was told, like, you're such a prodigy. You're the next fucking genius, blah, blah, blah. But, like, at the end of the day, all I was was competing with a bunch of fucking rednecks in this town called Nanaimo in Vancouver Island where the education system was honestly pretty subpar. Then I went to Vancouver for university. And guess what? True geniuses I found. And I was like, wow, I wasn't the king, man. I truly was not the king, as King Baro would say. And then there was a whole arc there in university where I just like, how did I even get out of it? Man, there was a lot of depressed, like university was fucking depressing. At a certain point, I just kind of gave up and just started smoking weed and watching anime all day. <laughs> Basically what I do now too. But during those times, I was like running away from my problems and like justifying like, ah, these GP doesn't fucking matter or whatever. And I start playing video games and joining clubs. But at a certain point, I think... The moment it all changed was when I came home during my third year of university and my mom was bald. And I was like, what the hell? And it was like, she has cancer, stage four. And I was like, that was a turning point. That was like the moment where I realized life is so precious. She died at 49 on Christmas. That's what I got. My third year, that's what I got for Christmas that year. And like, that was a turning point and made me realize I am wasting my life. I am straight up doing nothing with my life. Health is like the most important thing that a lot of people take advantage of. Simply being able to just like walk. Simply being able to just be not in chronic pain is such an advantage, but you don't recognize that because you have it, right? You take it for granted. Something changed there. And then ever since then, there's just been a deep fire within me to just like grind, but you don't become better until you hit rock bottom. And it's hard to like catch yourself when you're falling deeper and deeper into the abyss, man. So like this is kind of showing his like heroics and bravery that we see like in season one, right? In season one, like, sorry, not season one, <laughs> arc one, you see this Natsuki Subaru giga chat. I'm like, yo, how the hell is a neat like this? So, like, extroverted. How is he so, like, outgoing? This makes sense. 
何も考えないで暴れてばっかりでってそう思ってたよこんな楽しいこと俺と一緒にいなきゃ味わえないでも何でもしてつまらない時間を無駄に過ごしてればいいんだって、うん、俺はもっと Are the friends slowly going away? They are. Look at the imagery here, man. Four kids following him. Three. Two. All by himself now. You're wasting your time. But like. I think Attack on Titan did a pretty good job in portraying how you can be special while not being special, you know? There's a whole episode talk where the mom says some crazy shit, but it's just like... I don't know. I think everybody deep inside is special in their own way. It's just that they don't know how to understand how they're special and get that shit recognized. And even beyond that, like, do you need to be special to live a fulfilled li fulfilling life? I don't think so. It's just because he wants to be recognized, right? He could simply just chill out and have actual authentic deep relationship with friends and family and you know have a fulfilling life that way you don't have to be the best at something but it's that comparison that's made right it's like the comparison being made of like hey you're his son right constantly in the beginning it was all about like you're his son no wonder it's ken's son <laughs> So he feels like he needs to be better. <laughs> he's still doing it. <laughs> From the beginning, he's always had that. Look at everyone's faces, bro. Look, look at everyone's fucking faces, bro. Ew. What the fuck? Cringe. They all look disgusted. But he tried too hard. It was already afternoon. And this is when the procrastination happens. He tried way too hard high school debut. Everyone was kind of creeped out by it. But it's just like that one time, remember, in Arc 2 when Subaru was trying super hard? to make sure everything's gonna be fine and then that was counterproductive and people thought he was more suspicious like this is basically just trying way too hard when you just had to just chill out and make some friends and now he feels like he fucked up the debut he already woke up at noon and at this point it's like the quick send of procrastination of well kinda wanna just run away from my problems it gets out of control man ふつかに一回になって完全に学校に足が向かない。父さんもお母さんも。なんでやっそれない。友達とも仲良くなっても変わらずに接してくれて。だ。だから。お前なんか愛してない。お前なんか大嫌いだ。俺の子じゃない。
Is that a head? Is that his head or is that his fucking feet? Did, did, did he not just fucking stamp? Like literally, Gomu Gomu no stamp? Like what? That's what your feet. Okay, that was an axe kick, exactly. What are you talking about, bro? Yeah. I see your leg goes up very high. Are you trying to say because your leg goes up as high as where your head is, it's basically a headbutt? Or is this just a random comment you're making and ignoring Subaru? Okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> Love the dad so much. He's so fucking nice. Man, if you want to kick you out, you should have been more like Rudy from Rezero. What the fuck you doing, man? You're, you're literally a mediocre neat. Even being a neat, you suck at it, bro. You're straight up not even worth kicking out. <laughs> Okay. Yeah。どうもその必要もないぐらいにな。いや。行ったろ。エミリア。月だって。そう言ってくれる子がいた。yeah, everyone in, you know, the isekai world. True. Isekai。Okay. <laughs> How are we gonna go back? <laughs> I don't think this is gonna happen, Dad. I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm fucking stuck. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> okay. Aww. <laughs> I don't think he can. Literally, plot wise. Is there really no other way? Are we just stuck here? There's no gonna be mentioning about different world travels. I'm, I'm just assuming Sato is the one that brought us over, right? There must be a way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Very heart touching scene. Man, that whole scene with the dad, Jesus Christ. I'd like to summarize it all Subaru basically peaked early, but got compared to his dad of being, of course, you're his son. But as he started to realize that he's pretty mid compared to his competition, he felt a need to excel in different things by being the class clown. But while doing that, it turns out his pursuit of doing this shit, trying to diminish others' actual efforts and achievements, led to him being more isolated. And then it's just this fuck up of the high school debut and being a shut in and it just being coming out of control as you procrastinate, like the quicksand example. But then the mom and dad are also so supportive, he probably feels even more guilty. So it's just like. It's, it got worse because the parent turned them too nice. Because it feeds into his guilt of like, oh man, I should fix myself. But they're being too nice. It's just like, oh man, it's just like deeper and deeper and deeper. I don't think this is the mom and dad's fault, of course, right? Like, if, if anything, the mom and dad are the most... I don't know most about the mom, but the dad right now is one of the best dads I've ever seen in anime. Honestly, he's literally like competing with... Who else is there in dads of anime, bro? Fucking Misfit of Demon King Academy, right? There's very few dads in anime that are... Genuinely this fucking amazing. Paul, Wishoku Tensei. Paul is not the same as this guy. I think Paul is an incredibly well-written character who represents a flawed father trying to fucking figure shit out as he goes. Because he's not perfect and he has to deal with Rudy. But he did try his best for sure, right? You see him fuck up a lot of times, but, you know, he did try his best. But, like, 
it's pretty good dead, man. Like, this is like one of the best deads I've ever seen in anime. Very hard for heartfelt moments. So, I'm sure the other half is going to be up to mom now, right? Alright, we're going to school? Good luck. Oh. <laughs> that sound effect is crazy. When he fucking stuck his hip out, that sound effect is fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Alright. I think that's genuine development, right? He did that pose before too, like you saw in class. Like, I think the, um... I think the pose... This is, like, important. Because he does this shit before. In the, even in the beginning of season one, right? He does this shit a lot. Even in the high school debut, he did that shit. But that was like... It's like an act. He's just doing this shit to fucking stand up because he wanted to be recognized, right? That's not genuine pose. But for the first time, I think this pose is genuine because he's accepted all his faults. And he's very aware. And now he's making a comeback. So therefore, this pose is different. Like, it doesn't need to be that deep. It really doesn't. It's a fucking dumb pose, but like, there is meaning in this pose. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna see Ma. Oh, oh it's the figurine. I'm like, yo, yo, I'm like, oh, who's this? Who's the character? Oh, oh. No, it's just, just, just Subaru's figurines. Never mind. Is it a Subaru look? anywhere? No, there isn't. There we go, let's go to school, man. It's like Hikigaya from a uh, Hachiman, right? Snafu. Let's go to school after all those lost time. This mom's a little special. <laughs> it's for special. Yeah. I don't like peas, mayonnaise. Why are you kicking me shit I hate? They love mayo. Mom is attentive. <laughs> what would you choose? The world or... What is this conversation, mother? Do you think that you just want a logical argument? That you just made a point that because he picked the world over mayonnaise, you're right? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yo, do you think that the world... I thought... I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if Puck likes mayonnaise or not because Puck hates the world, right? Okay. お母さんも嬉しいけど、明日にしたら。そうやって息子が。I'm already too hard on everyone else and easy on myself as it is, okay? If you were really like that, it would have been a lot less trouble for me because she's gone through more trouble trying to help him out like that. Hmm. He's very... Everything he said there, is he easy on himself? He's not. Mom come to school with us? Okay, Mom. Yeah, that's just him lying and the mom calling him out, I'm pretty sure, right? Kind of. He doesn't have to. He's super. She knows everything? So like the aloof airhead mom that I thought was stupid was actually a genius the entire time. She's very perceptive when it comes to Subaru. She knows exactly what he's all about, even if he lies to himself. 
That's the whole gap, Moe. Straight up some Masha shit from Roshdere, intentionally acting aloof when this entire time she's just the most intellectual person. You know what a suppository is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, now you know. Now you know what the suppository is. <laughs> You're doing plenty, mom. You might be doing a little too much right now. Amelia, Rem. それはとてもいいこと。その人に感謝しなきゃ。そうなんだ。だからこうして今歩けてる。<laughs> what about the whole lore of <laughs> people get so mad when people say it, like there, there, there is like I've noticed when watching Mushoku Tensei and Rezero as well it's usually dudes with the actual it's, it's always the dudes with the actual Rudy profile picture or like Subaru profile picture where like I think I'm an incredibly reasonable person not to like self glaze myself, but I think that I'm pretty unbiased when trying to think about how harsh I'm being to Subaru or how much I like give him credit when it's there. But some dudes will straight up still fucking type essays and like protect Subaru and say shit like, You guys are so mean! You always say he doesn't deserve any of this! You don't know what he's gone through! It's just like, oh my god, come on, bro. Even he's the fucking saying I don't deserve them. Come on, bro. <laughs> Mm. If I had to give them away, I'd make them mine, even if I don't deserve them. Interesting line here. Huh, it's not about whether I'm good enough for them or not, even if I don't deserve that shit. I'll fucking make them mine. Pleiades, Subaru. Planet, stars, constellations, Subaru logo. Sorry. Pleiades, Subaru, what does it mean? Uniter. He unites, he gathers. Subaru, six stars, six witches, whatever, six archbishops, whatever. Uniter. Uniter. He, he, there's a theme of Subaru uniting and gathering people around him. I mean, you've seen him throughout arc one, two, and three as well, right? I, I'm, I'm sure there's not a direct correlation here, but this talk about how I make them mine, even if I don't deserve them, of his, of his own ego and greed or whatnot, but he's a uniter. Okay. We just gotta prove our worth after. We'll fuck up everything, we'll gather them, then we'll... <laughs> make them... We'll, 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 we'll make up after. We'll figure this shit out after. Ken. Mom. Mom just undid everything there. All the development's gone. <laughs> yes. Do you need to live up to the expectations for this kid? I think this is all wrong. You should never have to feel like you, sh like you want to live up to the expectations. You are your own unique person. All those comparisons, they can go fuck themselves. You be yourself. Who cares? <laughs> There it is. That line again. I know what you're saying, mom. But the way you say it, I was like, yeah, you know, you're not your whole dad. You're like half of that shit. So you're like 50% way there. But it's fine. Because like biologically, you know, half, half. So it's fine. Yeah, cool. Thanks, mom, I guess. What about you, mom? Can I be a little bit like you? Okay. That's right. Your own unique way. Did I say I want to be like you? <laughs> okay, mom. Bye-bye. That is diabolical. Might even be better than Anastasia's. Oh god, mother. You're gonna get hit by a train. You're about to get isekai'd. Okay. She got past the train tracks. Poof. Bye, mom. 
二人のことを思ってるしあしないしスバル思わないし自分で自分が嫌いになるようなことスバルマウスバック大丈夫だからスバルが何分かってるだって you really? どうしてマダーズインスティンスお母さんなんだから She's got her eyes and we got her eyes. Man, both the mom and dad scenes. Aww. That's like the parents' love, right? It's like they were never expecting anything for you to do to them. They just wanted to have you and, you know, raise you up and just be by your side. <laughs> ごめんなさい。<笑><笑><笑> Hey, there's our school. No, not yet, but. <laughs> she did it. She forgot about take care. She, she forgot about take care. <laughs> he kept walking. Oh, yeah. Take care. Bye, mom. Oh. Okay. Take care. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. This is the events right before getting to the 7 Eleven. Before he went out. Take care. That's what the mom said. Her last words to him. And he's so depressed and hates himself so much. And he said nothing back. He could have never said. And that's the last thing they said. So this is the time that he can say something to make it good, right? What can he say? I'll be back? I don't know. But closure here. What about the dishes? What? You're just going to point out that it's just fucking packed up? <laughs> what, what, about, what about the dishes? There's a lot of dishes. What do you want me to look at? That the dishes are fucking dirty? I'm looking at the dishes. What? We don't even fucking talk about the dishes, bro. You fucking schizo. You just fucking saying the dishes. I, I, it's fucking sink, bro. You're wasting my fucking time, monkeys. Bye bye. There it is. The closure. All right, time to go to school. <laughs> what are you what are you doing here? You're definitely not from here. Is this why a kid Nessa said like I'm excited for your trial? She says something like that, right? When she told us that she gave us the qualification and when the time comes, like I'll be very interested in how everything turns out. Like, is she literally just eavesdropping in her trial? Yo. What's up? Mm. Yeah, he passed it. He got closure with his parents. And that's the episode. Parent and child. Is there a post credit scene? There is not. And damn. That's the episode, man. This episode was very wholesome to see how much love the mom and dad give Subaru, right? I was always wondering, like, because he's had such a positive background like his parents are so good right he lived a pamper life like how did he turn out like this well it's kind of like a positive reinforcement where he got compared to his dad because of how the giga chat he was and he peaked but early but 
he became, you know, he fell off and he decided to pursue other shit in vanity, like trying to impress people buying a class clown, but it got him nowhere. And then like falling into this quicksand of procrastination while the dad and mom are still being nice and him wanting punishment and saying, please, I feel like I need to be called out, but they never did it because they're just such supportive parents. And it's just like this loop of positive reinforcements over and over again. A lot of this shit really does explain Subaru's like, you know, behavior as a neat being so extravagant, all the poses he did. Like, remember, there's a specific lore about the fucking pose he did here, right? Because like, this is the cringe that he used to do before to try to like, look cool and try to, you know, be the class clown or some shit. But this is now overcoming all that shit and accepting it and moving forward. So like, very good episode to teach us about Subaru's inner psyches, why he was a neat, what caused him to be a person like this, and then to have actual closure with the mom and dad. This trial was amazing, man. Without this shit, he would have never been able to say all the things like, you know, take care, you know, I'll be back. It, it's it's such a nice way because even like, the, you know, when the dad said, please take care of us when we get older and he's like, oh, we can't, we're fucking stuck. But overall, it's just a very, very wholesome episode. During the episode, there was a lot of different dialogues that was kind of suspicious, that kind of, I don't know, uh, hints at suspicions of like his inner sins kind of leaking out. It's some, there's some weird shit he said here and there. I think the most interesting line was about how even if he doesn't deserve it, all those people, he'll simply just make them his and then he'll make sure things are better at the end. There's, there's a lot of like suspicious dialogue here and there. Maybe I'm thinking too much into it. Maybe there's nothing else, but that's pretty much it for me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for even more content. And until next time, Take care.